Let's take a look at the starting lineups, and we'll start out with the visitors. Notre Dame at 18-0. A freshman running the show, Lindsey Allen, replacing Skylar Diggins at the point this year. Good news for the Irish. Jewel Lloyd is back into the lineup after missing a game with a knee sprain and breaker in a chanwa. Up front, the Canadian Olympian. It's a freshman at the point as well for Maryland and Lexi Brown. Rutan is the shooter on the perimeter alongside Thomas. And then Melina Howard and Alicia Devon give them some good size and strength on the low block. Maryland in their home whites, and they control the tip. And here is Lexi Brown, the freshman out of Suwannee, Georgia. Already we see the start matchup right from the beginning. All-American on All-American. Kayla McBride drawing the first assignment on Alyssa Thomas. Long rebound comes out to Ariel Breaker. And Lloyd up to McBride. She'll pull up on the run and knock it down. Kayla McBride at 16 points and five boards per game for the senior right here in Pennsylvania. As good a team as there is in the country in transition because they have so many shooters. You have to find them beyond the arc. They're not just going to all, all the time attack and try to go for layups. They're going to shoot shots from beyond the arc. Short corner, Thomas, the left-hander, won't go. Uh, knocked out of bounds, last touched by Marilyn. Dee Cantner will correct herself there. Dee along with Brian Ederline and Angela Lewis in the striped shirts tonight. This is the end of the floor to watch here, is how does Maryland defend Notre Dame's attack? To reference their efficiency, how good they are on the offensive end. Multiple players will initiate, multiple players can make plays. Notre Dame's going to have to be sound on this end of the floor. Boyd gets her first shot of the day. Jewel, for the first time in her basketball career, wearing a brace on her injured leg, and she's also wearing a sleeve on the other leg, so she doesn't get uh, any friction going on. Rutan, you've got to watch her out beyond that arc. She's got range anywhere in the gym. She'll test it right here. Comes up short. And then she is able to knock it loose, but the foul is going to be called before the shot. And that will be the first on Kayla McBride. A look at Muffet McGraw. Well, the Irish departed the Big East with both a regular season and a tournament title last year. Winners of the 2001 National Championship, and you can put it in the books year in and year out. They're going to get 25 wins. And a second quick whistle against Notre Dame. That's going to be on Natalie Achampo, her first. Brenda Freeze, 12 years at Maryland, highlighted by the 2006 National Championship. She was the coach of the year in the league last season with a roster severely depleted by injuries. They still managed to finish in second place. This will be their one and only matchup during the regular season in the ACC now that the Irish have joined the lead. What a race the ACC has been so far. Notre Dame and Duke. The only two teams undefeated. But North Carolina and Maryland right on their heels with just one loss. Lloyd rattles it in and out. Rebound hits the ground. But now Maryland. They have missed their first four shots. Thomas loses her balance. And the foul will be on a Chanwa, and that is her second personal. Well, that's a great sign for Maryland. It's not a front court that's going to knock you over with their scoring prowess, but Devon right here, great job attacking, understanding that a Chanwa has one foul, and that's the one player for Notre Dame defensively that they can't lose. If you're looking for a weakness in Muffet McGraw's team, they're undefeated, but post-defense, particularly when Achanwa is not on the floor. So if you're Maryland, I think you keep going down in the paint now that Achanwa's picked up her second. Natalie does not even make it through the first three minutes. Barely two minutes in, and Taya Reimer, the freshman off the bench. They had some foul problems last Monday night against Tennessee, and they rescued themselves with a huge second half and terrific support from the bench as Lloyd scores on the take to the rim. Yeah, that's going to be a tough matchup. Uh, I mean, that's going to be a challenge there for Rutan to check Lloyd. I mean, it was just a blow by there. She got into the middle, already hit another jump shot. If they stay in that man-to-man, -man, look for Notre Dame to try and milk Jewel, Jewel Lloyd on the offensive end. 
Stacy Brown. She looks for three. That won't go. Offensive rebound. Thomas has it. The Maryland team coming in with just a couple of losses. They fell to UConn early in the season and midweek suffered their first league loss at Virginia. And a couple of fortuitous bounces for Taya Reimer, the freshman from Indiana. You know, we were talking to Alyssa Thomas at shoot around about the Virginia loss, and she said defense is where we need to improve. She said they shot 50% from the floor and 44% from the line. I said, well, that's what Notre Dame averages for the season. What are you guys going to do against them tonight? She said, we'll be better. Well, Thomas, another offensive rebound. Third opportunity, and Maryland taking it right into the paint and forcing the whistles. First down, Reimer. How about Thomas working the glass? Well, you, you've got to score with Notre Dame, no question. When you come in to, against a team that averages 88 points, you've got to be able to score with them. One way Maryland can do that is hit the offensive glass hard. We heard Brenda Freeze reference it in her pregame speech. We have to get every 50-50 ball. We have to be on the boards. Offensive rebounds will be big for this group tonight. First of our double header for you tonight on Big Monday, Stanford and USC coming up next for first place in the Pac-12. I'm expecting Dave Pash to rack up double-digit assists because tonight he's got a pass to Bill Walton and Rebecca Lobo. That should be a great listen out on the West Coast. I don't know if Walton passes too much. <laughs> he, he might just bring it up and, and jack it up. Lloyd fouled on the shot. There's that tough matchup that you mentioned. Rattan going to be whistling for the foul. You think Lobo goes with the polo or no polo? You know, the last what game I do? saw of just Walton in the polo, but maybe uh, maybe they'll go with the dual polos. I mean, there there's got a lot of post points on that team. <laughs> <laughs> National championships. Rebecca Andy brings the Olympic gold medal with her. Yeah. The, uh, you know, Julia Lloyd has really made a big jump from her freshman to sophomore year. I thought she was so advanced defensively as a freshman. And now offensively being dependent on more uh, with the graduation of, of Skylar Diggins. And she's responded. I think she's had an All-American type season thus far. When you look at her ability to, to, to really put up numbers in every category. Transition Thomas. And get the pull up to drop. And it will go back to the Irish. Well, Drew Lloyd is the sophomore out of Lincolnwood, Illinois. She's their leading scorer this year. Was the Big East rookie of the year last season. And even better numbers this year. She's down in the corner with the 32 in blue. Here's the All-American with Bride won't go. Katori Walker-Kipro going coast to coast. Terrific looking freshman from Alacoppa, PA. Lloyd. Foul on the rebound is going to go against Alyssa Thomas. To tie Stanford or to, to move in the first place. It's a great job by Cynthia Cooper thus far. Channel two quick fouls. She's on the bench for the Irish. McBride will take it to the left side. Finds that spot on the window to knock it down. Now she's so crafty. It's not like she blows by you. It's just that she just waits and waits for you to make a mistake defensively. And, and she's got every shot in the book. She's got a floater. She can score with either hand around the basket. Marilyn turns it over. McBride on the wing. Uh, just patience. I mean, goes away from the screen and then has a presence of mind to pull up there right before Devon is able to get a get a piece of the shot. Here's McBride. Last couple of years alongside Gibbons in that backcourt, the block down low from Devon. And Thomas with the catch. She has started out one for six tonight. McBride on the run. Nice find by Allen for three. It's a really good pass. I mean, great delay pass there by Allen. And finding your All-American on the wing, never a bad decision in transition. 
Muffet McGraw absolutely raves about her freshman point guard. Her, her countenance out there never changes. And has been making good decisions for Notre Dame this year. Lexi Brown, her counterpart, offensive foul. That's Ariel Breaker coming over to take the charge. And what's so good is she knows she has Kayla McBride the entire time, but she waits to sell Alyssa Thomas down the lane guarding Reimer to think she's going to the bucket, and that gives McBride the gap. It's the patience. You know where you want to get to in transition. Hold it, hold it, wait for it, and give your wing a clean look at it. It's 60% shooting. as many turnovers as field goals thus far. Lloyd elevates and scores. Now, how do you guard that? How do you guard that if you're Maryland? I mean, off the handoff, do you trap it? Do you, do you get over and level off quicker? It's just Lloyd has, has that ability to just rise up and fire, even if you're right there contesting it. Knee does not appear to be bothering her much thus far. Here's Thomas. She'll take that mid-range shot. One for seven to start for Alyssa. Loose from Thomas. Mosley off the hesitation, and the foul will be called on Marquisha Wright. Notre Dame runs a lot of this action off the pinch, off the elbow area. Their post players handling the basketball, handoffs, backdoor cuts, pitchbacks, a lot of different things. And that option is based off of reads. And Jewel Lloyd makes a good read there, but she also makes a really good shot. First foul on right, Brene Mosley to the free throw line. She's an 82% shooter. Uh, women's basketball uh, returns on Sunday for you with these Fighting Irish taking on Duke. That's the other team that's undefeated in ACC play, led by Tricia Liston, who is the most prolific three-point shooter now in Duke history. That'll be coming up Sunday at 2 Eastern, also on your Watch ESPN app. Too much experience and too much pride on that team to to let the Chelsea Gray injury take them out of the running. They still got a ton of talent. Trisha Liston has stepped up big time scoring the basketball. They've won a couple now since Gray went down with the season ending injury. Allen tried to dish that off in traffic. Notre Dame will keep it five on the shot clock. Breaker got the bounce. Breaker on Thomas. Breaker over to help out down on the baseline and she forces the turnover. Notre Dame, 61% shooting from the floor and an eight point lead. Great help here by Breaker. If you come off Thomas, you've got to smother it. She forces the turnover. So nothing easy for Thomas, not allowing her to catch it in her spots. And as a result, Notre Dame gets the ball. Off the bench and right into the scorebook. Michaela Mabry with the triple. Love it. Love it. Come out firing, right? And she's been firing very well as of late. Michaela, Michaela Mabry in much better shape this season and is a huge scoring option for them off the bench. Brianna Jones tries to muscle it down low. Scramble for the loose ball. Held ball that will go to the Irish. Mabry along with Madison Cable, the difference makers in their road win last Monday at Tennessee. Well, they shoot 44% from beyond the arc. 44%. And they have two straight up gunners that come in off the bench, Mabry and Cable. They are looking for it. You've got to find where they are in man-to-man -man orange zone because they will pull from beyond NBA range. Yes, Muffet McGraw about Mabry. She's a jersey kid. They just have that ingrained toughness about them and a fearlessness when they play. Here she is again, and there she goes again. 
23 to 10 Irish. A little 1-3-1 action. They're changing defenses on Maryland as well. Nice pull up there by Mosley. Someone other than Thomas is going to have to get involved. With the way Notre Dame is playing Thomas, a lot of an attention. Their open looks to be had. Someone on the turf needs to knock him down. Well, you mentioned it earlier. This is the end of the floor now for Maryland. They have not been able to disrupt Notre Dame. A foul on the drive as the Irish have hit 10 of their first 15 shots, including two threes off the bench or two buckets off the bench from Avery. We've seen this action a couple times, all right? We saw Lloyd with great success being able to get into the middle, uh, the free throw line area. That's, that's the holy grail for guards. You get in that free throw line area, you've got a free throw line jumper. The defense helps up. You've got passes, and so Notre Dame with that action in the pinch post. They get their guards in there time and time again. That's why they're so good offensively. Kayla Mabry in her last five games, 63% from downtown. And looking for the second free throw, making her homecoming. She's from Mitchellville, Maryland, about 10 miles away, has a big contingent here. If you're Maryland now, you've got to find some traction on both ends of the floor. And the way you do it offensively, execute, run your stuff, and crash the offensive glass. There'll be some opportunities there for Thomas or Devon. Taken away, McBride. She's got Walker Kimbrough on her defensively. Good hustle defensively by the Turks. It results in a good ball, and it will go to Maryland. Terry Reimer checks back in for the Irish. Thomas is one for seven. The rest of the team is three for eight through the first ten minutes. There's Thomas. Offensive stick back is good. Devon hitting the boards. It's a Maryland team that's fifth in the country in rebound margin. Lloyd posting up. Count it. Jewel Lloyd back from the injury. Missed their last game and has not missed a beat. She is so good. I, I mean, she can really score at every level on the offensive end. And that's a really nice pass in there. A nice post entry by Reimer, but she's got the ability to post you up. We've seen her mid-range game. She can shoot the three. I mean, this she is going to be a star. She is going to be a star in a Notre Dame uniform. Already a, a complete player. We talk about it every year, Carol, with some of the top teams, certainly worthy of an All-American, but perhaps more than one All-American. Dr. Kimbrough won't get it to go. And here comes Lloyd, Notre Dame with numbers. And a bad pass trying to feed it to Mabry. You know, off that point, Beth, there's no question in my mind that McBride and Lloyd are two of the top ten players in the country. Uh, I mean, and it, Notre Dame's undefeated. Obviously, what they're doing is leading to, to team success. But there's no question those two are two of the top ten players in the country. And you have two guards, all-American guards like that, you're in a good spot. Lexi Brown. Trying to get it to Mosley. Bothered by Lloyd, and Mosley's going to be whistled for the foul. And that is her second. And this is part of what makes you a player that's an All-American is doing it on both ends. And, and Jewel, Jewel Lloyd does that. She doesn't shortchange the defensive end. She stays engaged and stays active and forces a turnover there. Lloyd. She has been fouled now three times in a row. Two on the offensive end, one on the defensive end. She's got ten points, a couple of boards, three assists. And now the Irish are into the bonus. Yeah, we weren't sure she was going to play. Foul charge to Walker. Came up her first. We should all have a sprained knee like that. Oh, I'll take that one. Numbers up for Jewel over last year. 
certainly were able to draw off of the confidence of playing alongside Skylar Diggins. But, you know, we talked to Jewel earlier today and said when we come to Notre Dame, our coaching staff does a great job of recruiting players that we just want to win. You know, we go out and we play without any fear, regardless of the opponent. And they've been showing that here in the first half, 30 to 14. And they have held Thomas in check. Brown off the cross into the paint. Knocked out of bounds to the Irish. Maryland just five for 19 in this first half. Watch Lloyd here coming to get the handoff from Ryan right at the elbow area. They like this in the side out. Lloyd, short on the shot. Thomas with the rebound. Finding Brown, the kick out for three. Good run for Maryland as Mincy knocks it down. Maryland has struggled offensively, but O boards in transition. Good quick shots for them have been the recipe for success on the offensive end. Well, we weren't sure if she was going to play tonight with that sprained knee, but she has played like an All-American. Uh, it's so difficult to defend. Iowa and then Julius Randle in Kentucky meeting LSU Super Tuesday tomorrow on ESPN and on your Watch ESPN app. That's a tough roadie for the Duke Blue Devils uh, at Pittsburgh and then the big showdown Saturday up at the Carrier Dome against Syracuse. The new ACC. That's right. <laughs> Lamar Patterson for Jamie Dixon. I think he's been the player of the year in the ACC so far. Nice drive. All right, this is a charge. He's going to ride a little bit out of control. That's the second foul on McBride. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Remember the new rules now with the secondary defender coming over in women's basketball You have to be in position before the feet leave yeah. the floor and that that was not the case. No, no way that should have been a bucket So you got two Irish starters McBride and a charm was sitting right now with two fouls and an and one nope an offensive foul at the other end and that will be on Lauren Mincy. Is it the off arm? Looks I like guess Ryan yeah. pushing Lloyd. That's the third offensive foul on Maryland here in this first half. Lloyd, nice back door and the assist Madison Cable. Irish are at 65% shooting. They're getting whatever they want. I mean, they're getting whatever they want on the offensive end. The catch for Thomas. And Alyssa Thomas, after starting one for eight, gets her second bucket. Senior out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the two-time ACC Player of the Year. She could join Duke's Elena Beard as the only three-time winners in ACC history. Oh. Lloyd off the window. Jewel with 16 on her return tonight. The degree of difficulty on that one, that was something. I mean, she changed. You see, the body positioning, she changed in the air so she didn't pick up the offensive foul. Tried to force that one into Thomas. <laughs> I mean, senses, she's got a post on her, drives baseline. Look at that. This is a lateral jump almost by Jewel Lloyd. Man. <laughs> she's pretty good. <laughs> she is uh, showing her skill set tonight on the Notre Dame defense. Well, for Maryland, they've got as many turnovers as buckets so far in the first half, under six to go. Breaker kicks it out. Cable, she's a three point threat. Kavarman's got it, and now Lexi Brown with the push. Breaker, jumping in with the passing lane. Ariel Breaker with the takeaway, and the breakaway.
She won't wow you with numbers, but the coaching staff loves the effort from the senior at last year's senior class, overtaking them to be the winningest in Notre Dame history. They've gone to the Final Four every season they've been here, three in a row. And they're trying to bring home a national championship to match the one that the program got in 2001. You look at this Notre Dame team, and there are very few programs that can withstand the loss of a star player. I mean, a star player like Skylar Diggins was, a three-time All-American, and not miss a beat. UConn out has made it an option to be able to lose star players. Notre Dame is that type of program now. They lose maybe the greatest player in their history. They're still undefeated and contending for a national championship. Yeah, Terrific recognition of the mismatch. Breakers scoring over the shorter Rutan. Tough shot from Mincy, weak side, last touched by Maryland. When Brenda Freeze said it before the game, we must win the 50-50 balls. And to this point, it's been about 100 to zero in Notre Dame's favor. First to the floor, and it's made a big difference. Irish have uh, taken seven of the eight 50 50 balls, according to Statman Extraordinary Marty Aronoff. And they'll take a triple as well on the offensive end. Michaela Mabry, another one. She's got eight off the bench. That is presently better than any of the Maryland starters. Breaker had a hand in there again. And a foul is going to be called on Mabry for the reach in. A lot of different options for Notre Dame. Michaela Mabry, one of great firepower off the bench. Well, here's a summary of what we've seen through the first 16 and a half minutes. The Irish shooting 70%. They've scored off of turnovers. They've held Alyssa Thomas in check, just two of nine shooting for four points. And Jewel Lloyd is uh, presenting her case for All-America status this year. 16 already in the first half. The Irish have been playing without Natalie Achanwa for almost the entire half with foul trouble. McBride has missed substantial time with two fouls as well. And the turnover for Notre Dame. I like that move by Brenda Freeze out of that timeout. Come with a little extended pressure. And, you know, for, force them to kind of speed up, disrupt their rhythm. Notre Dame is so good when they get into a rhythm on the offensive end. We've seen it here in the first 17 minutes. Nice job there by Maryland defensively. And down low, points for Maryland and the 6'3 freshman, Brianna Jones. Breaker, good catch and the finish. Assist, Mabry. We saw McBride on Thomas early on. We've seen a lot of aerial breaker when Notre Dame's been in the man defensively. Yeah, she's done a nice job. She's done a nice job. Fronting when Thomas goes to the, to the post, pushing her farther out on her catches at the top of the key. Mason Post to the heart of the D for two. Maryland starting to settle down offensively. Almost got another turnover. This is where it might be nice to have Kayla McBride and Natalie Achon on the floor experiencing a little bit of pressure. A lot of times your post player can be that pressure release in the middle of the court. Maybe the other team is shooter and the steal by Thomas. Four on two, Maryland Mincy for Thomas on the run. doubles this year she's got two triple doubles she had two prior in her first three seasons and all around talent now up at the top of that pressure six 
six points, four boards for Alyssa. Under two minutes to go in the half. Maybe gets it out to Lloyd. Marquisha right, and it's a hell ball. Quick recovery there on the pick and roll. Yeah, nice job there. Nice job there by Lexi Brown. And, that, and that's what you're doing if you're a point guard caught in the post in that rotation. I mean, you're just trying to get a piece of the ball. Oh, holy cow. My goodness, with just four on the shot clock, no reset on the held ball. Lloyd elevates and scores. Mincy looking to counter. For Lloyd, she's seven for nine. The swap by Maryland defensively. Walker Kimbrough. Thomas cleans it up for two. Backtracking to get the steal, Alyssa Thomas. Devon. Breaking a sweat in the first half with two fouls apiece. Second Monday night in a row that their starters have gotten into some trouble. Fortunately for Notre Dame, number 32 has been awfully good. And that's really the, the difference when you look at how these teams are, are, are constructed. Is There's no question Alyssa Thomas is the go-to player for Maryland, but not a lot of experienced help, not a lot of proven help on the offensive end. When you take a look at the flip side of Notre Dame, they have three players that have gone to Final Fours, that have played in, and produced in a ton of big games. And so they can, with, they can withstand. They can withstand this for a period of the game. Lloyd able to convert. The Irish making the move from the Big East to the ACC. They were always going to be tested in the conference by Connecticut. In recent years, Louisville, prior to that, Rutgers was always a solid challenge. Now they move into the ACC, and some very good tests await them down the road, including two games against Duke during the regular season. Nice dish. Devon from Thomas. Final 25 seconds of the half. Jewel Lloyd. Allen left alone. Chance here for Maryland to finish strong, and Thomas is fouled. In the backcourt, uh, Alyssa Thomas headed the other way for free throws. One one. A couple plays, you know, not not so smart. Allen takes, if we're going to take a look at, at Thomas here, the nice dish, but Allen takes that shot where it wasn't a terrible shot, but there's only a two-second differential. So you can really hope for the final shot of the half and go in, be almost assured to go in up 14. And then Notre Dame compounds that mistake with fouling Thomas and putting her to the free throw line. Left-hander knocks it down. She's an 84% free throw shooter. The last minute of the half is so important because it can change how you feel about the previous 19 minutes. We saw that last week. Yeah, I mean, it can change how you feel about it. Maryland can go into the half now thinking, hey, we've got some, mo some momentum. We feel good about ourselves. Irish have a chance to... Put some points up. They get McBride back into the game for the final shot. She's forced to give it up, and they do not get the shot off in time. Jewel Lloyd shoots 70% in the first half. She's got 20 on the night. And the IC. And here is the ball handler, Lexi Brown, for Maryland. Brown attacking the rim and scoring. One finds break. 
Walker. Now back out top to McBride to reset for the Fighting Irish, who are 18 and 0 on the season, 5 and 0 in the ACC. And the steal by Thomas. Alyssa Thomas on the run, goes to the left and around and out. Tip back to the Turks. Four and one in the lead. So they're a game back in the loss column to the Irish and the Duke Blue Devils, who are also undefeated in the league. Brown got it. The freshman with a couple of buckets out of the locker room. Turnover, Notre Dame. There is the top of your ACC standings. Of course, the North Carolina Tar Heels also in the mix with one loss. And a, a pleasant surprise down at NC State. They're 5-2 and two under new head coach Wes Moore. And what should be a terrific race in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Vincey misses. And out went to Allen. McBride for three, and it's good. You take a look at Maryland, and outside of that shot, a good start to the half. And Brenda Freeze makes a change in her starting lineup here. Melina Howard not in, Lauren Mincy is in. That enables them to play Alyssa Thomas at the four and trying to create some problems that way offensively. Thomas offensive rebound, count it, and a free throw coming. Offensive rebounds, not just about size. It's about how quickly can you locate the basketball? How quickly can you get up into the air? And Alyssa Thomas, it's a mismatch. It's a mismatch. And Breaker has done an admirable job to this point. But Alyssa Thomas, you're not going to hold her down for an entire game. And I like Maryland's energy. They've had some carryover. More disruptive on the defensive end. It's made a big difference. Second foul on Breaker. And now for Thomas, 13 points and six boards. Lloyd had it stripped loose. Thomas on the run. The fake pass spins it off the window for two. And a 22-point deficit is down to six. Maryland has had more deflections in this first two and a half minutes of the second half than they did in the entire first half. A totally different Turks team on the defensive end. Foul away from the ball is going to go against Devon holding a Chanwa. It starts with the defense, and Jewel Lloyd drives into a crowd. We didn't see that crowd in the first half. We saw Notre Dame player after Notre Dame player getting easy layups. Well, now the script is flipped. Maryland's the one getting easy layoffs off their defense. Lloyd with the catch and the bucket. She's got 22. Eight of 11 shooting for Lloyd. An entry pass to Devon. Breaker with the double. It ends up with Thomas. And another and one. Positioning on the court. You've got to find an opportunity to get Alyssa Thomas clean looks at the basket. Now, this wasn't a play for her to get the ball, but because she's at the four position, the natural double team partner for Achonwa, who has those two fouls, is Breaker. Well, who is Breaker checking? Breaker's checking Thomas. Free run at the offensive glass, and she's able to get back to the free throw line. Thomas started out one for eight shooting. She's hit six of her last eight shots. And she's got 16 points in the last nine minutes. Another whistle off the ball. That's going to be on Devon again, and that's her second. What a turnaround for Alyssa Thomas. The Chanwa on the inbound. The Irish scoring back-to-back out-of-bounds plays. Oh, 
Mincy with a nice change of direction. Thomas, another offensive rebound. Thomas taking over. Allen on the drive, and she's fouled. The offensive glass. I mean, at times it's been it's been Maryland's best offense, and you want to know why Muffin McGraw called those timeouts. Two timeouts she called at the end of that first half because she was afraid of this. You let a team get confidence going into halftime when they've played terrible the first 16 minutes, and this is what happens. Notre Dame had the opportunity there at the end of that first half to really put a stamp on this lead and to send Maryland into the into the locker, locker room questioning themselves. And now you send them into the locker room with confidence in themselves. Now you're in for a dog fight. Allen hits a pair. Four minutes in, and Maryland has really turned things around here, getting right back in it. Stick around, by the way. We're going to chat with Skyler Diggins coming out of the next timeout. Runner baseline is short. Rutan's got it. Skyler in the house tonight. Uh, Brittany Mallory, another former member of uh, their terrific Final Four teams in recent years, in attendance as well. Mosley. All the way around and out. Offensive stick back again. The channel of foul by Jones. Big push from Maryland. And when we come back, Skyler Diggins on the mic. Ooh, and I'm calling plays from the sideline. I'm like, let's run this, run this. I'm screaming at the officials. I'm out of control over here. What do you think about this current crop of Irish as you get to watch them? They're so smart. They're such a smart group. And we got players that came in that were ready right off the bat, like Taya, like Lindsay, who are ready to play right away. And, uh, you know, we have some players that now needed that year. Maddie, Michaela, who are ready to play off the bench. That, um, you can tell really developed a lot from last year. Irish on the inbound, Drew Lloyd with that huge first half, and now Chanwa rattles one in. She only played the three minutes in the first half. As Mosley brings it across. Of course, Skyler, you've spent a lot of time with Drew Lloyd and Kayla McBride during practice and in games as Maryland scores again. What have you seen from them as uh, they've gone undefeated thus far in the season? They're just a team who is so smart um, in the offensive end. Um, we're so good because of Muffin McGraw. Um, Coach McGraw's philosophy on offense um, is a place for everybody. If you buy in, that offense is, is fluid. I mean, they're a well-oiled machine. Um, obviously, now in this game, we need to play some freaking defense. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> Thomas out here looking like LeBron. <laughs> Thomas gets another one. She has hit her last five field goal attempts. And now that's brought the crowd back into it as well. Skyler, one of the things we've been talking about in this game has just been Julie Lloyd and her improvement. I mean, from her freshman to sophomore season, I think she's had an All-American type year. What did you see from her as a freshman that kind of gave you some optimism that she would go on to, to have a great career? She was just fearless uh, right away. Um, somebody that I could defer to. Um, if, if Jewel shot the ball with the game on the line, I'd be confident that she could make that shot. She's a player that was so athletic, too. She could offensive rebound, uh, go up, I could throw an alley-oop, like, please. Oops, that bad pass. She can make a play out of it. Um, and a player that, was, that wasn't afraid to go up against the best. What's impressed you about this young lady right here with the basketball, Alyssa Thomas? She is just so strong. She's so strong. And her ability to make things happen when she wants them to happen. Um, it's like a train coming down that lane. Nobody wants to take a charge. And, uh, you know, she got three and ones right now, really giving them a spark uh, to start this half. She has just drawn the third personal foul on Natalie Chunwa. And now a whistle will send it the other way. 
you know, we were talking about foul on the Terps. We were talking about this in the first half about how you know Notre Dame is a program, and a lot of people would think, well, they graduated one of the greatest players in their history, perhaps the greatest player, and now what's going to happen? Is there going to be a drop off? And you're a program when there isn't one because there's a culture that's created. And, and you reference Muffet McGraw and what she does. How does she create that type of environment so that these players have the belief that they're a championship contender no matter who's in uniform? She's the most competitive one of us all. Um, she's the one that is the most intense in practice. And she demands the best out of her players. And if you show her that you have it, she's going to make you show her every single day. And um, somebody who she just loves to practice too. Like, Coach, we can't, we, we got to leave. I'm, we're going to tell NCAA on you. <laughs> she just loves to be in the gym. And um, when you have a coach who has that much passion and wants to get better as a coach, it makes you want to play hard for her. Terrific backdoor Lloyd and the assist coming from Reimer. Off the bench, uh, everybody getting involved as Notre Dame's depth has been tested here with some foul problems. Mm -hmm. Lloyd able to step into the passing lane and knock it out. Have you had a chance to see some of the other teams around the country? We're going to see Stanford taking on USC in our second game tonight. Also, of course, Connecticut remaining undefeated. Yeah, they're so talented. They're such a talented team. Um, I wish that Notre Dame played them this year. I think that was the best rivalry in college basketball the last few years, just the way we went at each other. And um, it was a fun game to play as a player, too. You knew it was going to be tough. It was going to be a great atmosphere for basketball and the biggest platform in college basketball. And um, I'm sad to see that, that, you know, we're not meeting each other, but... I think in the final four, it's a definite <laughs> possibility. I said, if you guys win a championship, I'm definitely getting a ring. <laughs> An opportunity here from Maryland to trim it to two or possibly one. I'm going to sit back on the other side, you guys. <laughs> Time out, Notre Dame. Skyler, thank you so much for joining us. Skyler Diggins. Defensive end of the floor. And that output is because they're getting stops on the defensive end, and they've disrupted Notre Dame's rhythm on the offensive end. Down 22 in the first half. And now a possession with a chance to tie it or take the lead. Undefeated Notre Dame in big trouble here in College Park. For Notre Dame, she'll play with three fouls. The spin and the shot is short from Walker Kimbrough. They did not get Alyssa Thomas a touch there. of trying to disrupt the rhythm of Maryland offensively. Great pass there by Alyssa Thomas. Devon ties it up. Mabry blocked by Mosley. Right is there. points from Arkeisha. In the lane, Mosley. This is McBride. Quick on the shot, and that one's blocked. Five on 
two chirps. And Mincing ties it at 62. Oh, that back to back blocks by Maryland. Just great anticipation, not just contesting the shot, but altering it. And then that's what we've seen in the second half. Turnovers, block shots, off to the races for the Turks. McBride and a blocking foul called. No basket, says Angela Lewis. That will be on Alyssa Thomas. We see this all the time from Alyssa Thomas. She'll go end to end. Playing the floor position here has been the best lineup for Maryland in this game, coast to coast. That was a really good screen set by Marquisha Wright to get uh, Kayla McBride a step there. But that's been another big difference for Maryland defensively. You remember the first half, they're running all that elbow handoff and Notre Dame guards are getting into the paint very easily. They're fighting over now. They're, they're, they're wedging themselves in between the two Notre Dame offensive players on that exchange. They're fighting over it and they're not allowing him to turn the corner. The miss by McBride there, 11 for 13. Maryland 11 for 12 at the line. And the door is open for the Turks to take the lead. No, we need a screen. This is one four flat here. Don't even come up and bring another defender. Get out of there. Thomas, pull up in the paint. All the way back from 22 down. McBride attacking the glass. by Devon. Pachanwa, the outlet to Mabry. Michaela Mabry fouled on the drive by Walker Kimbrough. A really good outlet pass by Natalie Achanwa. I don't see anything from that angle. The only question is, is on that back side that we can't see. Is she nickered? Mabry able to knock down the first. That's just her 20th free throw attempt of the season. Gets them both. of starters Ariel Breaker or Lindsay Allen in this rotation here for the Irish in the second half. Thomas after the slow start. Misses that one. She's got 25, however, on the night. Lloyd ripped away by Devon and then right stepped into the passing lane. The three ball, McBride got it. Timeout Terps. A brief lead wiped out by a 7 0 Irish run. Well, you knew Notre Dame would answer. I mean, you knew they would. Eight points tonight for the backcourt duo of Lloyd and McBride. Lost the big lead, threatened here tonight by Maryland, and the response. And the turnover, was it tipped out of bounds? Maryland says it was tipped. And all three officials will converse. And it will stay with Maryland. No reset, 17 on the shot clock. Jones 
Jones with the catch and the finish. Assisted by Brown. McBride calling for the screen, then goes the other way and feeds it underneath. The charm who couldn't finish. Irish come out with it. China knows best. And we are looking forward to that second matchup tonight. Dave Pash and Rebecca Lobo alongside Bill Walton. First place in the Pac-12 USC and Stanford. And the stars have come out tonight here at the Comcast Center. All-Americans Kayla McBride and Alyssa Thomas not disappointing. Jewel Lloyd with 24. And what was once a 22-point Notre Dame lead is tight. Irish coming in undefeated at 18 and 0, one of just two left, along with Connecticut. Notre Dame gets the takeaway. Crossover, Lloyd blocked by Jones. Right now, what do you see for Notre Dame? We're, we're starting to get to, to winning time for both teams. And on the offensive end, Lloyd and McBride's handling and a lot of ball screen action. Putting the basketball in the two best players' hands and letting them help decide your offense. Jones with another nice defensive play to knock it loose. Here comes Thomas on the run, short as McBride stepped away. And now Kayla with the counter, the kick out to the shooter, Mabry. And a push going to be fall, called on Jones underneath. And that will get a Chanwa to the line. We talked earlier in the half with Skylar Diggins, uh, the leader at Notre Dame for the last four years. We talked to Natalie prior to that Tennessee game last Monday, and she said, we are thrilled as a senior class to be able to take over the reins. It's our responsibility now. It's our job to get back to the Final Four and win a national championship. Tremendous experience for her with the Canadian national team at the Olympics a couple summers ago. Didn't play much in the first half. She scored six here in the second. Well, she's a player that's been tested. I mean, you, you think of the battles over the years against Griner, against Stephanie Dolson. I mean, multiple times she's gone up against the best that the country has to offer in post players, and she's held her own on the defensive end. Well, Alyssa Thomas back to the line, the two-time ACC Player of the Year. She has owned the conference, and her favorite spot, ironically enough, is the ACC right there on the floor. That's where she loves to get offensively. That's where Notre Dame wanted to try and keep her off of, but she has owned that spot again tonight. Yeah, yeah. seven points now. She's, been, she's gotten there a, a few more times. I, I think the biggest thing that Alyssa Thomas has done is that she's been able to find other areas. Offensive yeah. rebounding, transition, and that's what makes a great player great. When, when they limit you and your pet areas, do you have the ability to score in other ways? And she's proven that tonight. She has now tied Shea Duran for the most free throws made in Maryland history. Mostly will pull up on the break. Thomas trying to fight for another offensive rebound. She's the last one to touch it out of bounds. Jewel Lloyd. Tan clears. Under six to go. Mincy. Off glass. 
We've seen other players step up, and that's what we talked about to start this game. Maryland only has one other player that averages double figures. That's Shatori Walker Kimbrough. And so who else is going to give them some points and give them some aggression on the offensive end? Mincy certainly answered the bell after starting the second half. Lindsay Allen now back out at the point. She hasn't played in a while here in the second half. Lloyd turned it over. Well, Sunday we've got a good matchup from the Pac-12 for you. Stanford and the Cal Bears. Californian Brittany Boyd were at the Final Four last year. Shanae Gwumake trying to close out her illustrious career with a national championship at Stanford and Cal Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock on ESPN2, also on your watch ESPN app. Field goal percentages have flip-flopped here in the second half. Lloyd rebounds the Thomas Miss. Under five. Lloyd crosses. No one go. Chama was stepping for the rebound. It's taken away by Thomas. The long outlet to Mosley. And the lay -in. How good is this Maryland comeback then? I mean... They were dead in the water in the first half. They were. Nothing was going right for them. Down 22 points. They lit a spark right before halftime. And they have outplayed Notre Dame here the last 20 minutes of this game. And it's been a fight. I mean, everything's been a fight. Offensive rebound, defensive rebound. But this has been the area that Maryland has reaped a lot of dividends off of their defense and off of their defensive rebounding. Great pass there by Alyssa Thomas. That was a right-handed pass. A little right-handed pass. Her off pass hand, yeah. lefty. She just picked up her third foul. Chan will back to the line. Natalie now two for four. in the paint tonight from Maryland. A lot of those offensive rebounds and stick backs. A lot of those on the run in transition. Thomas looking to post up. Breaker able to stay in front of her. Mid post on the near side. Thomas with the catch and a blocking foul called prior to the drive. And that'll be number three on Breaker. And back to the free throw line for Alyssa Thomas, who's seven for seven today. Oh, Breaker got caught in between there. She's trying to deny, watch, and then she's caught in the middle. And so now she's too close. Thomas is smart enough that she drives at her and gets that body contact. So Breaker did such a terrific job in the first half of pushing Thomas out, having her catch it beyond that three-point line. And right there, she just got caught in the middle. Terps 14 of 15 at the line. They've been down by as many as 22. They came back to briefly grab the lead in the second half. That was countered by a 7-0 Notre Dame run. And now we're under four to play. The turnover in the Terps. Within two, 3.47 to go. And Stanford, and you can also log on to ESPNW for the new Big Monday Smack Talk. Tina Thompson, the USC alum, Candace Wiggins, a Stanford alum, going to be yapping at one another tonight in our second game. That's all at ESPNW.com. And Thomas is fouled on the shot. That's going to be on Breaker. That's her fourth. And it seems like we're seeing this is a replay of just what's been happening the entire half. Yeah. I mean, Alyssa Thomas has done just great work on the offensive glass, and Maryland's been able to get to the bonus, and she misses that one. But they've been able to, to cut into the lead and, and by Notre Dame by getting the free throw line, hitting the free throws. Thomas now 8 for 10, and she has surpassed Shea Duran. Defensively as well, they've taken away 
Jewel Lloyd, who had 20 points in the first half, just four in the second, and she has not scored in the last nine minutes. Lloyd, number 32, passes to McBride, looking for three. Mabry with a big shot for the Irish. Miscue by the Maryland Dita. Lose the shooter. She's got 13. Tracked down in the corner by Thomas. And I think the, is the official saying she was out of bounds? Let's go back to the three. Well, it's one of the advantages of, of having three shooters on the court at the yeah. same time. You know, you're going to have to give up an open look to one, and certainly Maryland trying to shade toward Lloyd and McBride, and as a result, maybe gets the look. Maryland keeps. Thomas to her right. Contact in the paint, no whistle. And the bucket is good from Devon. 14 and 6 for Alicia Devon tonight. Pass broken up. And a quick timeout called by Muffet McGraw. Good pressure on the ball by the Terps. Got a two point game with 2.20. And how about the matchup? Cassie Herberts and Shanae Agumake. Stanford has won the last 12 in that rivalry. Dave Cash, Rebecca Lobo, and Bill Walton on hand for the call. And there is Lloyd. Heard from for the first time in 10 minutes. Well, great play. Great play by Muffet McGraw trying to get Jewel Lloyd an opportunity to go one on one with Rutan guarding her. We talked about that matchup early, and it's an opportunity to get Lloyd back into the scoring column. She's been quiet so far in the second half. That's a loud bucket for the Irish. 27 now for Jewel Lloyd. Lexi Brown launches for three, and it's good! The moxie from Lexi in the All-American's face. McBride inside to Jewel Lloyd off the window. One shy of a career high for Jewel. Brown, confident, with the step back just inside the line. Timeout, Maryland. Eighty-three, eighty-one. I mean, she didn't hesitate. That three of four. Cut the lead to two, and then to get her team an opportunity. One possession game here for Maryland. They need to stop. Breaker looking for Lloyd. Second chance. Got it. One minute to go. Irish by four. Mincy drops it off inside. Devon with the basket. Timeout. Brenda Freeze. Two point game. 38 seconds to go. Nice driving dish from Mincy. That gets you fired up, and we see the athleticism, the quick jump offensive rebound there by Lloyd. They'll pour pressure out of the timeout. They will challenge the freshman, Lindsay Allen. She gets it across midcourt. Lloyd to McBride. The senior All-American. Checks the shot clock. McBride puts it up, and it's good! 12 seconds to go. Brown will launch deep three. And Lloyd is...
is able to track it down. Final seconds will tick away, and Notre Dame survives to stay undefeated at 19-0. And a huge road win after losing a 22-point lead. They hang on to get the W. Gets down the stretch from Jewel Lloyd and then the senior.